Hi there, Sandra here from The Chauvin's Nest. I've put together 10 of some of my favorite DIYs for spring, and I hope you like them too. Enjoy! I'm going to use this sage green color from Americana. It's an acrylic paint, and I'm going to give the board front, back, and sides a really good coat of this. This is going to be my bottom layer, and then I'm going to do some additional paint on top because I want the green to just kind of peek through. Using linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint, I'm gonna give this a really good coat and then I'm just gonna let it dry completely and then I'll do some distressing with. Using coarse grit sandpaper, I'm gonna rough up the edges just enough to show the green through and then I'm also gonna do some sanding on the top of the board because I want some of that green to peek through there as well. This stencil came from Hobby Lobby and I think I got it around five or six years ago. So I'm not sure if they still have it now. I'm going to use the sage green and a medium gray tone to stencil this in using my Dollar Tree stencil brush. Okay, now get ready for it. The reveal is coming and this is always the best part. I just love it and I get so excited when I can peel that stencil off and see the results of my hard work. I love magnolia blossoms, so I have this stash of a whole bunch of different types, some pink, some white with pink, but these with the green centers are not that pretty. They're really floppy, and I decided that I would change these into a completely new flower. The first thing I'm doing is taking out this little cone shape that's bright green out of the center and I'm able to very easily just pull it up a little bit and then give it a snip and it just pops right off. So I'm going to do that for all of the flowers. I've got my glue gun warmed up and ready to go and what I'm going to do is add just a dab of hot glue to about three quarters up the petal and then I'm going to hold the two petals together because I want to achieve a closed flower bloom. I'll continue gluing the petals together one after the other so they're nice and tight together. This will allow the petals to stand straight up. So basically I have created a tulip and I'll do the same thing for all the rest of the magnolia blooms. Now that I have all my tulips made, I'm going to be gluing the tulip onto the stems that I cut earlier. I'm just going to put a dab of hot glue at the end and then hold the flower onto the stem until the glue dries. The green stems that I have are all different shades, so I'm going to take this floral tape that I got at the Dollar Tree, I've had it in my stash for a while, and I'm going to start at the very base of the flower and cover up the glued part, and then I'm just going to stretch and wrap it around all the way down the stem. I was lucky enough to find these tulip blossoms at the thrift store way before Christmas. I had found this really big wreath that had a whole bunch of tulip stems on it and I pulled off the tulips but I kept the leaves because I knew at some point I would be doing something with them. So what I'm going to do is just put some glue down at the bottom of the leaves inside. There's two of them glued together. Then I'll place my stem inside and then just hold it secure until the glue dries. I grabbed this wooden box that I also had in my stash. It was from a previous project that I no longer want to use. So I'm going to take the hinges off because I also don't need the lid for this box. I'm using some fine grit sandpaper just to sand off the sheen of this ink. It was a paint pen that I used on this. So I just want to get that kind of cleaned off, make sure that there isn't any shine and there isn't any bumps from the paint that might show through when I give it a new coat of paint. 
The paint I'm using for this project is Martha Stewart Home Decor Chalk Paint in Summer Linen. This little paint pot is actually one of the first chalk paints that I ever purchased and I like the paint. It's a little on the thicker side so I did have to add some water to it to get it into more of a workable form but that's what happens with chalk paint. As it ages and as it oxidizes with oxygen in the air it does get thicker but because it's water soluble you can go right ahead and thin it down to the desired consistency just using a little bit of water. I'll be giving the box two coats of paint. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love for you to hit that red subscribe button and stay tuned. If you are a current subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for your support. I'm using a dark gray for the flower and the little fleur-de-lis pattern in the center instead of the black. I just wanted to give it a little bit of variation. So now I'm going to remove the stencil and as I mentioned earlier it's really important not to load your brush too heavy with paint and as you can see here I did load it a little bit too heavy for the M and the A and for the word blooms there's a little bit of bleed through so I'm going to just take a small brush dip it into my linen color and just do some fixing. I've got some bare dark wax which is dark brown and I'm going to give this project an antique or weathered look. It's going to look kind of old. If you want to know a few other ways of how to distress, I'll link my three ways to distress video up in the corner. Using wax is a really easy way to distress. All you need is a soft cloth. I'm just using a piece of a t-shirt. Dip it into the wax and then rub it onto your project. You can make it darker if you want, you can leave it lighter, it really is totally up to you. Now that I have the box complete, it's time to get my tulips all set up. I've got this green floral foam from Dollarama. I'm going to put the whole chunk in and I'm going to stand it on its end so it is the same height as the box. Then I'm going to add some other pieces of styrofoam because I don't want to glue this in. I want to be able to remove this if I want to use the box for something else in the future. I have seven tulips in total so I'm going to start in the center at the back with the tallest tulip and then work my way gradually down to the sides. I'm going to put some in front, some in back. I ended up moving the tulips around a couple of times until I got the look I wanted. I'm using some Spanish moss just to fill in so you don't see the foam. Again, I'm not making any of this permanent. I'm just laying it in and tucking it around. I like the way the Spanish moss looks because tulips, when they come up, they're coming up through leaves and sticks and dead branches from last year's season. So I think it was just an appropriate fit. Today I'm starting off with these tumbling tower blocks that I got at my local Dollarama store. They are larger than the ones you can get at Dollar Tree, but the Dollar Tree blocks would work just as well. The first thing I'm doing is putting four of them together. Now I'm using my Aileen's Tacky Glue. You could use wood glue, hot glue if you wanted to, whatever works for you. Once the set of fours have had a chance to dry and set up, I'm going to actually glue them all together so it will be one row of 12. To make sure they're really secure, I give them a good push from either end. And if a little bit of that glue squeezes up in between, then I know I've got a really tight fit. Once I'm done with the 12, I'm going to set that aside to dry. When I'm working with glues that have a lot of thickness to them and like this, the Aileen's glue, it's very sticky and tacky. It's hard for me to squeeze out the tube. So I always put a little bit on a plate and just use a paintbrush. And that also ensures that I get it everywhere I need it to be. So you can see here that I've done 
four blocks end to end and now I'm stacking another three and that will create the sides. Now I'm going to use a square wooden dowel to act as the brace in every corner and I'm going to make it the same height as the stack of three blocks. So I'm just going to measure that off and then cut out four. To assemble this I decided just to use hot glue. You could use the tacky glue or some wood glue if you wanted but I find that hot glue works just as well especially when you're gluing raw wood together. So I'm just going to butt the side up against the bottom and press it and make sure that it's nice and secure. I'll do the same for the other side. Next, I'll glue the sides on and then I'll start working on the corners. So now it's very easy to just go ahead and set the corners right inside. They fit perfectly and I'm really pleased with how this is coming together. I didn't tell you yet, but this is actually a Kirkland's dupe. I found this beautiful arrangement on the Kirkland's website and I thought, you know what, I can do that for less. It's a little different. They have some rounded circles cut out of the top piece and I'm going to be working with straight corners, but I still think mine turned out fairly good. Wait till the end. I think you're going to like it too. Before I finish assembling, I'm going to give this bottom piece one coat of Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Maui Sand. It's a beautiful dark charcoal gray. I love using the Folk Art Chalk Paint. It's super thick and you can usually get really good coverage with just one coat. So now I'm just using a few more blocks as a guide to ensure that I know exactly where I need to glue my center pieces in to create the top part of the crate. As I was gluing these pieces together, I realized that I just made a little ladder. So if you want to make a ladder for your home decor, this is the perfect way to do it, simply with some tumbling tower blocks. Now I'm giving this one coat of the gray as well. Now I'm just going to add some Dollar Tree twine to the top of the jars, just like in the photo, and I'm going to wrap it around five times and then hot glue it in place. I'm going to use hot glue on each of the corners to put the ladder in place. That's what I'm going to call it now because that's what it turned out to be. And I'm just going to make sure that I push it down so it's flush with each of the four corners. Now that's all put together and reinforced with some hot glue on the inside a bit. And now I'm taking some of the Parisian gray color, which is also from Folk Art, and I'm using a really rough chip brush. It's got some dried paint on it already, so it's giving me a really good rough texture, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to dry brush all the way around the piece, front, back, sides, inside, everywhere it has a dark gray finish is going to get some of this dry brushing. Once the dry brushing was done I added the jars, popped in some lavender florals from the Dollar Tree and this is how it looks. This project is super easy. I got this little bushel basket from the thrift store for $1.99 and I'm taking some white chalk paint and a big fat brush and I'm just going to dry brush all the way around. At first I started just with the top band because I wasn't quite 100% sure that I wanted to do the whole thing white but once I got around to it I decided yep the whole thing's going to be white. I did do quite a bit of a heavy dry brush but there is still going to be a little bit of that wood peeking through. I'm going to glue in a piece of floral foam at the bottom. This is all the floral foam I have so it's going to have to make do but I'm not adding a ton of florals. At first I thought I was going to add some of this eucalyptus and then maybe some lavender but once I got the eucalyptus in I decided that I liked it just with the greenery. I added a piece of burlap ribbon around the top band and it was all done. I love this. This 
next project is using a can that I've had and used before from the Dollarama store. It's just really nice and tall and that's what I liked about it. But it was a little too shiny and it had some scratches and blemishes in it. So I'm taking a kitchen sponge and some medium gray chalk paint and I'm going to go ahead and just pounce on it and give it a base coat. I'm going to try and turn this into a dark galvanized look. The next step is going to be using black. I'm going to take the same sponge, I haven't washed it, and I'm going to go ahead and just apply some of the black. I am dabbing off the majority of it because I want it to be fairly light. And I'm going to also go with a very light touch because I don't want any of that square edge of the sponge to show. If you press too hard, then you're going to get that line and that's not what you want to achieve. So I'm going to continue to just dab on as much black as I think I I want all around the can. So now I did go ahead and cut a piece of the sponge in a circular manner just because it was giving me some lines and you can see them here a little bit. So I'm just taking some more of the gray and just blending it in a little bit more so you don't see those harsh lines. As I'm sitting here looking out my window editing this video, we got at least three inches of snow overnight, but I'm still looking forward to spring. So I'm going to use this Fresh Flower Market stencil as my inspiration, and I have a chalk pen that I'm going to use to write on all of the letters. It's not going to look exactly like the stencil, but I wanted to kind of mimic the stencil look. So that's why I'm leaving some gaps in between the letters. I'll have a free printable very similar to this available on my website. The link is down in my description box. If you don't have handwriting like this, you can definitely use the free printable. If you're doing it on something black, you could probably just use some chalk and then use a pencil to transfer that over. Or if you have some graphite paper, you could do that transfer as well. I used the stencil for the flower, but I didn't go all the way to the edge because I didn't want it to bleed. It did bleed a little bit, but most of the shapes turned out pretty good. I'm going to seal this container because I know it's going to chip. Chalk paint on metal is not a good thing to do, so I did go ahead and take it outside and give it a good spray. I'm now going to take a little rough brush and dip it into some of the dark gray paint and just pounce it on top of all of the white areas just to make them look a little bit more aged and weathered. I plopped in a bunch of pansies and I think it looks super cute. I've got three thrift store flips for you today and the first one is using this little wooden crate. I think it's really sweet but it has all sorts of stuff on it. <laughs> These labels, oh my gosh, it is wood. It's probably not a solid really good wood more of plywood planks so I'm just using my razor to start taking these labels off and then I realized that that whole green texture was kind of like a wallpaper that was glued on and I ended up being able to peel all of that away to reveal the bare wood. I love farmhouse decor and nothing says farmhouse more to me than white so I'm going to go ahead and give this a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Inside, outside, top, bottom, everywhere I can reach is going to get some paint. I'm going to dry brush fairly heavily with Martha Stewart vintage chalk paint in the color clay. I really love the Martha Stewart line of paints. They're on the pricey side, but if you can get them on clearance like I did, it's worth the buy. I only paid $5 at Michael's. I'm doing another layer of distressing with a color called Maui Sand from Home Decor Chalk Paint and it's like a dark charcoal. You can see here that I'm kind of going in a little bit heavy with this as well but I'm also starting to blend that color in a little bit to give it more of an overall grayish look. 
I decided to use some chickens on this little crate. I thought it would be really sweet to have some eggs in it and be a little bit Easter related, but yet still farmhouse. These are some self-stick or self-adhesive stencils that I also picked up at Michael's when they had a Martha Stewart clearance. And I'm just using some white chalk paint and a makeup sponge and I'm pouncing up and down making sure I don't have too much paint loaded on the sponge because I don't want anything to bleed. It's always better to do a couple of light coats than one dark coat. These stencils also have a couple of little baby chicks and I thought this one would just be the perfect touch. So I'm going to add this one too and then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side of the crate. Since this has got chickens on it now, I'm going to add some eggs. I'm taking some of these wood shavings that I picked up at my local dollar store or they might have come from Dollar Tree, I'm not sure because I picked them up last year. I'm just going to cut some, put them in each of the four little slots, and then add some eggs. These eggs are ones that I had from last year. They were plastic eggs. I painted them with some really pale colors of chalk paint, speckled them up a little bit, and now I'm just going to add some bamboo skewers to the bottom of them. They have holes in them, and just poke them right into the Excelsior. This crate is absolutely adorable. I have this mirror that I thrifted a long time ago. It had a shelf on it, but that broke off. So I'm going to remove the brackets and I'm just gonna do that by unscrewing them at the back. I'm going to keep those brackets for another project. And then I'm just taking some coarse grit sandpaper and smoothing out all of the rough edges. I decided I wanted to build a little box at the bottom here. So what I'm doing is just pre-drilling some holes for the screws. Once I had the first side drilled, then I just used a ruler to make sure that the holes on the opposite side were going to be level and the same distance apart. For the boxwood, I'm just using some pieces of palette that I cut down to the size that I needed. And now I'm just marking where I need to pre-drill the holes. I'm using the same screws that were in the brackets that I just removed and I, what I'm doing now is just starting the screw into the back of the wood just so I can match up the drill holes on the other side. Now it's really easy to just finish screwing in the wood pieces. With the side pieces in then it's really easy to just attach the front part right into the sides. I've got my bottom piece measured out. It's just a little bit shy of being the full bottom but that's okay you're not really going to see it because it's at the bottom and I'm just going to screw that in place. Now it's time to paint. I've masked off the mirror and I'm going to start by using this Kills Original Primer. It's a stain blocker. I've noticed when I've been using some of these darker stained wood pieces that sometimes the red tones in the stain bleed through and turn the white pink. And I don't want that to happen anymore. I've had enough of those issues, so I've decided to just use that Kills Primer. I have that from a previous project up at our cottage, so I'm just going to use it. I'm going to use Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white, and I'm going to use my Bennett chalk paint brush to apply it. It's going to need two coats, but I'm really happy with how there was no staining, no bleeding coming through at all. 
everything's completely dry and now I'm taking some coarse grit sandpaper and distressing the top of the mirror and the box just a little bit. I want to bring out some of that dark stained wood underneath. I'm going to add some of the floral foam into the box so I can add some florals. I will be cutting it to measure so it fits right into the bottom of the box and then I'm going to glue it in with my weld bond glue because I want whoever gets this in their home to be able to switch out the flowers if they choose to. The greenery that I'm going to use is to the left there. It's a eucalyptus bush but I didn't like that color so I took it outside and I just gave it a little misting of white spray paint and voila I've got greenery that looks like lamb's ear. Here you can see that I've put five stems of the greenery in and now I'm going to start with my favorite lavender. I get this at my local Dollarama. It's $1.25 for this whole big stem and I love to use this in all of my projects so you will see it a lot. I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to trim off the stems and then add them in in little bunches. For this DIY, we are supposed to repurpose something that we already created, but maybe didn't like anymore. I don't like that wreath situation anymore, and neither do I like this sign. These are old projects that I just needed to get redone. The first thing I did was take this board outside and give it a good sanding. Of course, I had taken off all the hearts and everything that was on it, but it did need a good sanding just to kind of get some of that print off and the layers a little bit. It's going to turn out a little bit of a shiplap look, but I am going to turn this and make it a vertical sign and rather than a horizontal sign. Out of the wreath sign, I'm using one of the wreaths and I'm gonna be using the wood welcome sign as well. I'm gonna be taking some burnt umber here and just painting the wreath so it's not so white. I want it to have more of a grapevine look to it. The original wreath design had these green hydrangea blossoms on it and I've got a few more so I decided I'm going to do an ombre effect. I'll start at the bottom with the dark leaves and then I'll move to the lighter leaves and then finally the white at the top. Whenever I'm doing wreaths, I never use the flowers as they are. I'm always taking the, them apart and creating my own little design. But I always try to leave at least a little bit of a stem on it, especially with a wreath like this. I can just poke that stem in and then just secure it a little bit better with a dab of hot glue. Now I'm starting on the lighter green flowers and what I like to do is work from side to side when I'm going up the side. So I'll put one blossom or two blossoms in on one side and then I'll go and do a couple of blossoms on the other side. Because I'm doing an ombre look, I wanna make sure that I have the proper amount of florals on each side so it looks symmetrical. I flipped the wreath around so you can see it a little bit better. So I've got the dark green on the bottom and then I'm gradually moving up to a softer green and now I'm working on the white so the top portion of the wreath will get totally filled with white blossom now that the wreath is complete I'm gonna do a little bit of fixing up of this wood welcome sign I do like the color gray so I'm going to keep it that way but I'm going to distress it with a little bit of dark gray from rust-oleum so the dark charcoal and then I'm also going to take some of the linen white and give it a little bit of distressing that way too now comes the fun part I get to assemble this I'm going to be using the welcome sign and that's going to go on the top you can see that I have my sign laid out vertically instead of horizontally I'm going to also then put the wreath in the center and I'm going to put a stencil down at the bottom which I will show you in a few minutes. 
I'm using a combination of weld bond glue, which is my favorite permanent glue, and hot glue just to keep it in place while the weld bond glue has a chance to dry. The reason I like the weld bond is it only needs about 15 minutes or so to set up and it's still going to be tacky, but it holds things in place. So it is my favorite glue to use. I'll put a link in my description box if you're interested in picking some up. I think you can purchase it at a few different places online and in stores. Anyhow, I'm going to put my last name and then underneath that I'm going to change into a different font style and just put the letters EST, which is short for established, and then the year we got married, which is 1991. I'm really loving the texture of using the makeup sponges instead of a stencil brush and I also really like how the wood is splitting the letter in half sometimes and you're getting that little bit of a gap in the color. Here's how it looks hanging on my wall. I've got a bunch of these little containers that had the cork topper from the Dollar Tree. They were in their Valentine's section and there's all these sweet little quotes on them, but I don't need that. So I'm taking 100% acetone and a makeup pad and just wiping it off. I found some adorable little mini birdhouses at my local Dollarama store and they were $1.25 beautiful different designs and they're just so cute and tiny. I'm going to paint them with some neutral colors. I have three different styles and then I'm going to add some embellishments to them and make them look super cute for some neutral spring farmhouse decor. I'm using a combination of latex paint and chalk paint. The bottom of these birdhouses is just one small flat piece of wood and I wanted it to be a little bit more substantial. So I'm just taking a couple of tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and gluing one on the front and one on the back as you see me doing here. I needed to drill a hole inside the cork in order for the dowel that I'm going to use will be able to be pushed through. I'm using a quarter inch dowels so I have my quarter inch spade drill bit and I'm just going down the center of the cork all the way through to the bottom. I'm also going to need to put a hole through the bottom of the birdhouses so the dowel can fit up through them as well. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to take my quarter inch spade drill bit and drill through the bottom of the birdhouses just eyeballing in the center. It doesn't have to be 100% exact, but you just wanna make sure you get all the way through. I've got some 12 inch dowels that are a quarter inch wide and these came from Dollarama. I cut two of them in half and one of them sort of, maybe not two thirds, I don't know. You can see the two gray ones there, that was one piece. The reason I'm cutting them in different lengths is because I want them to be staggered in height once I'm done with the project. I then added some hot glue and then just pushed them in as far as I needed them to be and made sure that they were nice and straight. I'm using two painter sticks that I had hanging around on my desk to steady this little round jar and I'm going to go ahead and apply each of the decals making sure that everything is pressed down super well. I can use my Cricut scraper here to just burnish everything down and then I'll be able to peel off the transfer tape. I also wanted to paint the dowel rods and I'm just mixing and matching these three colors all the way through. You'll see what I mean at the end. I like the color of natural cork, but for this project, I decided to give them a coat of paint that's going to match the dowel that will be pushed into them. I'm going to just do across the top and about halfway down the sides. Now that everything is all dry, it's time to assemble. I did have to push fairly hard on the dowel just to get it through the cork. It didn't end up going all the way through, so I ended up pulling the cork out and just making sure that I got that dowel all the way through to the bottom. 
And this is also where I'll make sure that each of the birdhouses is a different height. Then I decided to also put a little bit of hot glue on the cork to make sure that nothing would fall out of the jar itself. I put them on a little wood frame, added some moss and a little bird, and I think this turned out absolutely adorable. My first wood project for you today is using this house from the Dollar Tree. I cut out some shiplap cardstock paper and I'm going to just use my glue stick and put it right inside the house to cover up those funky psychedelic colors. To cover up the edges where there's still a little bit of those colors showing through, I'm taking a little bit of twine and some hot glue and I'm just going to go all the way around and frame out the house. The houses don't have any wood grain on the very top here, so I'm just taking a comparable color and painting that on just to make it blend in a little bit better. I'm taking more of that shiplap paper and this little crate that I got from Michaels. You can see it's already got something decoupaged on it and that was just a little Christmas crate that I created. I'm going to use Mod Podge and glue a piece of that paper on either side to cover that up. I had put a coat of Mod Podge on top of that paper and there was no sanding it off. It was stuck there. So I'm just going to let it sit for a minute and do the same on the other side. Then I'm going to take this same color paint and just give it sort of a dry brushing. I'm going to change the color but I want a little bit of that original crate color to show through. Then I'm just going to attach the crate to the back side of the house just using some hot glue. I'm going to use hot glue to glue the unfinished side right to the back of the house. I needed something to put inside this little house so I'm taking a piece of cardboard and I'm just making sort of a round half circle almost like an igloo shape. I'm going to create a bee skep. I'm going to use this jute rope from the Dollar Tree. It's a larger strand that I took apart for the three smaller strands. I'll use hot glue and just start at the bottom and wind it all the way around, gluing as I go to make sure it stays in place. Now, when I got to the end of this, I thought I should have probably made this a half dome, which would have looked a lot more realistic than just a little flat piece of cardboard, but I still think it turned out pretty cute. If you're not familiar with what a bee skep is, join the club. I wasn't either, so I looked it up online and what it was, was baskets that were placed upside down and the bees would go in and create their honeycomb and attach it to the basket. Basically, at the end of the season, when the honey needed to be harvested, they took the basket and everything away, which left the bees homeless. So. Needless to say, they aren't used anymore and in some countries they are even illegal. What I'm doing here is just creating a little door. I'm using a thick piece of the jute rope and gluing it in place. Using some black paint, I'm just going to paint the jute on the inside of the circle, not including the little circle, and that will create the illusion of that being open and somewhere the bees can just fly right into. To make sure everything has a cohesive look, I'm going to take that same mushroom paint and give the back of the house a couple of coats just so it can blend in. I want to glue the bee skip right inside the house, but I need a little bit of a support because I don't want to put it right on the back. So I'm using this little piece of a tumbling tower block that was cut for a different project. I'm just going to hot glue that onto the back and then glue the little bee skip right on top of it. I glued a piece of floral foam to the crate and now I'm just going to glue in some pieces of reindeer moss just to camouflage that foam. I'm also going to tuck some of the moss in between the slats on the front of the crate. 
to make a sweet little bee, I'm using this beehive bead. I'm going to paint yellow and black stripes on it. My bee needed some wings, so I'm taking some of this plastic poster board that I get at Michael's. This is sort of like stencil material, and I'm just going to draw on the wings of my little bee, cut them out, and then I'll be able to glue them on once the paint is dry on the beads. Using a much smaller bead, I glued it onto the other bead, and I'm just going to paint this black. It will become his head. Here I've got one set of wings glued on and I'm just going to do the same with the other just using hot glue. I glued my little bee on top of the skep and this is how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed these 10 projects and got some inspiration to start crafting for spring. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up that helps my channel get noticed more on YouTube. Don't forget about the red subscribe button and that notification bell. Bye for now.